everybody. How are you guys doing on the last day? How many of you are still kind of like, yeah, teach me more. Blah. How many of you are like, oh my God, coffee, please, right? Anybody? Okay. Now, uh, so this session is called uh, The Magic of Digital Media for Engaging Learning. And I I'm curious, do any of you, are any of you digital media teachers? Do you, is that what you teach? Cool, cool. Stay in touch with me for sure. How many of you are classroom teachers? All right. Uh, a lot of what we talk about can, I think, uh, help you see some new possibilities for getting kids much more excited about uh, stuff they might be learning. How many of you are school administrators? None? Well, let's make fun of them. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So um, let's, uh, let's, let's dive in. I got kind of tons I want to cover and only so much time. Now, We've got a chat going as well, todaysmeet.com slash rh. If you want to share ideas, feel free. If you uh, wanted to come to a session yesterday afternoon and missed it, you might find plenty of interesting <laughs> thoughts from the uh, folks who were here at, at that same address. So todaysmeet.com slash rh. And the, uh, the set of resources at the bottom, nextvista.org slash resources, if you stop right here and just do that much, then you'll, you'll see several categories of loads of freebies for you. And if you're you know, looking for a way to make sure to justify the district's expenditure of sending you to the conference or something like that, bringing that back, thumbs up. And then for media specifically, you, you can go there. I'll, I'll get you this, um, this link towards the end as well. Matter of fact, at the end, I'll give you the link to all of the slides. So you know, if, you, if you know you're going to be here until 11 o'clock and you don't want to write down addresses other than perhaps the chat, which I hope you'll, you'll take part in over the course of the session, then no need to do so because you'll get these slides. All right. So quick, quick thing about images and, and, and what we're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm using a lot of images in my slides. And I think it's important that we learn how to find copyright-friendly stuff and to properly cite it. I, work to model that in the slides as well. And so I'll, that's as much as I'll preach on that one. So here we go. Now to do digital media right, you know, I would say that one of the, one of the key pieces is, is that you ease into it. Uh, I think that a lot of teachers go from not doing any digital media to, okay, we're going to do a video project. Whoa. That, there, there, there are a lot of uh, scaffolding steps along the way that I think can help you get to uh, doing a really, really cool set of projects along the way. And these projects themselves are quite cool. So we're gonna start uh, with, with what, these, what these projects mean. So I'm gonna show you a video, but let me give you some background as, as to what it, is, what it is we're gonna see. Uh, I have spent most of my career, my name's, I didn't introduce, I'm Rushton Hurley, nice to meet you. Uh, I spent most of my career as a Japanese language teacher, high school Japanese language teacher. I was a principal of an online high school uh, and I, I do a lot of speaking and training, that's me. Now, uh, I did spend one year teaching junior high. One year teaching one class. <coughs> one. All right. And uh, just those were the neediest group of human beings I'd ever met in my life, right? But I kind of liked them anyway. So th those of you who teach middle school, you're like, yep, yeah, that's them, you know, kind of crazy crowd. And I think half of my stories uh, from my professional experiences in education come from that one class. But one of, the, uh, one of the assignments I gave them, because I wasn't teaching them Japanese, I was teaching them digital video. And I gave them the assignment of creating a video that in 60 seconds or less would teach something that one might run across in school. I said, yeah, how many of you have helped a younger brother or sister before? Oh, we have. Now imagine that, that you've got younger brothers and sisters all over the world and they need your help in learning some particular thing. So I want you to teach something in a very short video. So they went to work on it, and this one kid, uh, love this kid, Jose, all right, kind of big lumbering kid, um, came up to me as, as we started into this activity, and he said this. He said, uh, sorry, I somehow am feeling the groove. All right, that's all right. So, so uh, he said this, he said, Mr. Hurley, I said, yeah, what you got? I can't do this. Said, you can't do what? He said, I, 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 can't, I can't do this activity. I said, Make a video, you've made videos. I mean, you know, how hard can this be? You can do this. He said, no, no, I, it, it's the assignment. I, I, I suck at school. 
And I said, well, first of all, you don't need to use that verb. And second, at school? What do you mean, man? I mean, I'm sure there's all kinds of things you're good at. No, no, I, no, I, have, I have trouble with this stuff. I didn't, I'm not very good at it. I said, I bet you know like a math trick or two. He said, oh, no, no, I suck at math. I said, well, there's that verb again. What do you mean? You, you don't know one math trick? He said, well, I know one. I said, okay, good, good. Let's make a video. So this is Jose's math video. Now, it's not long. Don't blink. Here we go. Whoop. You know, it is so ineffective when you have not actually plugged in the audio cable. How many, how many of you uh, have moments where you think, you know, somebody says, oh, you know, like my computer's not working, and you figure out that, you know, it wasn't turned on or something. And, and you think to yourself, user error. How many of you have had those moments, All right? You just witnessed user error. But let's try it again. Let's try it again. And if all is well, then it will still just start just fine. What do you think? How many of you like that video? You're like, that's cool. How many of you say, well, I'd raise my hands, but I'm checking to see if this works. It does. It does. Now, the thing about the, thing about the video is that it's evidence that Jose is capable. That's important. Because he could come to me multiple times through the rest of the year and say, Mr. Hurley, I can't do this. I can't do that. And I can say, oh, man, that's what you said at that thing where we were teaching somebody how to do something. Don't you remember? Uh, and, and remember you did that video about nines? We put it on my little nonprofit's website that's got all those videos. There may be hundreds of thousands of people around the world learning their nines because of you. And how does he respond? And I quote. Oh, yeah, huh? Unquote. All right? But that, that's important, right? Kids have to have those moments of like, yeah, yeah, I, I was able to do that. One of the things that we do in school is we're constantly teaching them new things, of course. But in doing so... If they're having trouble with lots of new stuff, they may not be getting reminders that there's all sorts of stuff that they quite successfully learned, which may be the confidence that they need to be able to take on the new stuff. Can I get an amen? amen. Just checking. Now, so with evidence, you know, part of what we want to do is we want to say, all right, how do we get digital media to help them learn better and to make them more confident about their ability to learn any new thing? So you got Jose's story. But we've got all kinds of different things that have been a part of the, the evolving landscape of the internet over, over the past few years. So many cool tools, lots and lots and lots of them. So if we're going to ease into digital media, where do we start? Well, let's understand first that, uh, that the variety of tools sets this up for us. Uh, kind of hard to read, but uh, th this, is a, this is a cheat sheet, right? And it says the internet is a truck. No, series of tubes. The internet is not a truck. Now, the idea here is that the cheat sheet itself is something that a lot of us are, are kind of addicted to. So you're going to teach somebody how to do something. They're like, well, give, give me the steps. Give me the steps. A, B, C, D, E. Show me how to do this. Look, when you're learning something, if you learn via step A, B, C, D, E, you will learn only to have that thing there going from step A to B to C to D to E. That's not so helpful. What you really want to learn is that there are so many tools that can do great things if you just kind of come at it from the perspective of, you know, I'm just going to give this a shot. What can I learn? What can we try? So let's start with audio. And in starting with audio, I want to show you a program that's been around for a long time. It's a free program. It's a free download for Windows machines, Macs, for even Linux machines. Anybody using Linux machines in their school? All right. No, no wild geek studness going on there? All right. Now, how many of you have like older Windows machines at your school? You've got like these, you know, Windows, you know, 98, you know, things going on. All right, all right, good, good. Now, when you're talking about using, putting those, uh, those computers to use for digital media, you have to be really focused on what you're going to do because they don't run a lot of the newer stuff, obviously, but they do run certain things quite well. And this is, this is a good example. So let's take a look at, at Audacity real quick. Now, when you first look at this program, there is a sense of intimidation for a lot of people. Oh, man. 
you know, there's a ton of gray in there and there's a bunch of numbers and negative numbers and blah, blah, blah. It's just a mess. But if you look closely, you'll see stuff that you know, particularly if you are somewhere in the realm of my age. So, for example, what do we have right here? What is this? Play. What is this? Stop. What is that? Record. What's this? You already know how to use it. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it, it's already there. One of the things kids do really well is they, do, they don't worry too much about the stuff that they don't understand, and they focus in on the things that they do know. We need to adopt that perspective on a lot of things that we're learning. But watch. So we're going to record something. Here we go. I am not guilty. Okay, so watch carefully. I am not guilty. There we go. Now, you might look at that and say, well, Rushton, that's a bit of an odd sentence to toss in. Why, why would you do that? Because a few years ago, I was teaching a group of teachers in San Francisco how to use various digital media tools, and I showed them this, this one you know, about Audacity. And one of the teachers raised her hand and said, oh, I use Audacity with my students. I said, really? What do you do? She said, well, I'll show you. And she came up and she recorded the same sentence. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Well, wh where do you go from there? She says, I do this. Kids, do you see how this works? Do you see how this is where my voice is and the blue is kind of the volume and all? Yeah, 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 we see it, we see it. All right, so watch closely here. You know, you can hear the voice. I am not guilty. And you can take things like parts of it. You just click and kind of drag across and then you say backspace and then you go back to the beginning and you play it again. And the kid's response is something along the lines of, whoa. And she says to the kid, she says this, kids, do you see? Do you get this? I could record you saying something and then mess with it to make it sound like you'd said something different than you actually said. And the kids are like, oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Right? And I was like, oh, my God, that's a totally cool thing. That's awesome. How old are your students? She says, third grade. Duh. Oh, that's awesome! Because there's this teacher up in San Francisco teaching a bunch of eight-year-olds how to be critical of digital media. That's cool. Now, that's just one element of this. Mere, mo mere months later, right? I'm in Chicago working with some teachers there, and I showed them audacity. One of the teachers raised her hand, asked a question I had never been asked before. Mr. Hurley, yeah, what you got? I'd like to have my students do interviews of leprechauns. Can we do that with that program? All sorts of snarky responses came to mind. However, I decided, you know, that was actually a pretty cool question. And I answered her. I said, I think so. Let's give it a shot. Hello, Mr. Leprechaun. Welcome to Visti. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, and especially with uh, all of the food that is provided. Now, if I play this back, you're going to say, ha, boring. But if what we do is we identify the part that is the leprechaun, and we go to effect, and change pitch, and we move the little slider over here this way, a uh, little goes a long way, and I click OK, and then I go back to the beginning, and I play again, we get this. <laughs> a bunch of you are smiling because you can't help it. <laughs> it's fun. Now, now, the thing about that is that if you think back to your, your, just a normal class, you're like, how does this help me? I, you know, I, I teach math, science. Look, any given class that you teach, there really is going to be a certain set of things that, that the kids should walk out knowing, right? So if, 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 what we do often in, in our teacher preparation programs is teach teachers how to use the entire 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it may be, build the activities. And what we don't do is say, how do you know that the kids will be able to walk out with the two minutes they absolutely need? Now, there's a lot of ways to do that, but one way is to record it and change the pitch a little, because somehow that's more interesting to the people listening. And if, you, and if you have it as an audio file and you can upload it somewhere and kids can get back to it, then they can use that stuff that way. This is, this is not that hard, right? You, you see how hard this is, you know, to record. So check this out. I'm a technology guru using record and audacity. It, it, not, not, not too tough. But we often think, oh, it's going to be hard. You just get in and play. You just play. 
We work so hard to get kids to enjoy what they're learning as a part of our classes, and we often don't make time for ourselves to just play and learn something new ourselves. Because those are the moments when we can start saying, you know, I could use this with the classes. How have I heard of teachers using this before? One of the most powerful ways is through reading. Because so many, so many teachers do this boneheaded thing that I'm about to describe next. <laughs> Everybody looks up like, do I do that boneheaded thing? Probably. All right, now, we all do. We say this, all right, guys, we're going to read this passage. You'll take the first paragraph, and you'll take the second, you'll take the third. This is not getting kids to a point of, like, reading better. It's not. It merely highlights who's bad at it, and they know it. And they sit there, and they try to read as fast as they can. Why? Because, because they want to get past this point of being the idiot in the class, as they see it, who can't read. Now, if that's not constructive, then what would be? Well, imagine that you've got stations around the room, and the kids are doing all kinds of different things, and you say, okay, now, you're doing this over here, you're doing this over here, I'm going to be calling a few of you over to the one computer we've got, the, the 2002 XP machine, and uh, you know, some of you, uh, you, just when you hear your name, come on up. So people get to work in, they're all working, stuff going on in the class, and, and you call up you know, little, little Johnny, and you say, Johnny, I want you to record yourself reading this paragraph. Okay, so you just press record, Read, press stop. Can you handle it? I can do it. All right. So the kid records. Johnny steps up and says, I'm done. Gets ready to leave. You say, wait. Did you listen to what you recorded? No. Well, I'd, I'd like you to do that. Go ahead and do that real quick. Short paragraph. So kid puts the headphones on, listens. Says, okay, I did it. Did you read it well? And a lot of kids at this point will, will, will get very honest and say, I'm, I'm not that good at reading. I'm really not that good at it. So okay, that, that's all right. We're all getting better all the time. But tell me this. If you were to record it again, do you think you could do better? Now, now the kid is in the frame of mind of trying to improve. This is actually the thing we often fail to do, to get them in that frame of mind. If you, could re if you get the chance, if someone gave you the chance to record it again, could you do better? And now they're thinking about it, and they say, well, maybe, give it a shot. So, you know, they click the little X and they record again. And you have them listen to it again. Did you do any better? Yeah, you know, I think, I think it was a little better. Okay, cool. Let's listen to it together real quick. Just the two of us. Everybody else is working at the stations. And, and so you listen to it together and you say, hey, I noticed something. When you get to the end of the sentence where that period is, you like jam right into the next sentence. But, but just pause right there. When you see that period, just pause. And then start the next sentence. Take a breath kid does it, listens to himself read again, and suddenly he's like, I'm better. This is the confidence that I'm talking about. This is, this is the way to use these tools to get kids to, to make progress. Often we think that if we just do things we've always done, kids will make progress. No. Instead, what they need is to be able to, to, to feel the progress. And digital media allows that. Another use for, for this, by the way, is, is, is this. You can imagine a sub stepping into the classroom and picking up the sub plan and saying, hmm, Johnny, press play. Johnny steps up from the front seat, walks over to the computer, presses play, and here, here it comes. Hey, boys and girls, I'm, I'm at the VISTI conference in Roanoke, so I couldn't be with you today. However, here's what I want you to do. Open up your books to page 26. A sub plan, a sub plan. Because sometimes subs don't properly follow the sub plan. Anybody experienced that before? <laughs> Just in California? Just checking? All right, so lots and lots of possibilities. There are some great tutorials on my website about uh, Audacity, and so you are very welcome to give those a look as well. But let's keep going. Images. Oh, we just hit the exciting part. This part's great. This is awesome. If you were like, I'm getting bored. Sorry, no, no, not now. Here we go. So images, lots of possibilities with images. With the person next to you, Understanding that that is way too small to be able to see well. Nevertheless, if you can, try to identify any pattern at all that you can see. Go. You are free to the talk to the people to your right and left. All good.
All right, I'm going to cut it short. You're like, we just got started. Sorry, I have so many things I want to cover. Now, understand the nature of the question. I didn't ask you to identify the pattern that generated this set of pictures. That's the wrong question. And not nearly as interesting a question as, do you see any patterns? Because if I ask you right now, hey, sh share your patterns, share what you came up with, we would get all kinds of cool things from the group. Because people just have interesting insights on this stuff. And those insights can tell you a lot about how your students think and, and what they're looking for, you know, all those kinds of things. But if I say, what's the pattern that, that had me choose all these things, now there's a right answer. We are so into the right answer, and we lose opportunities to get some really cool insights from kids you know, by, by, by not giving them space for that. So I'm gonna show you some pictures. Oh, actually, I should explain actually what happened here. So I'm a language teacher, right? You might notice that up in the top there's various modes of transportation. This is for vocabulary. So I'll show a picture and say, what is it, what is it? And then they have to come up with the word in Japanese. If you came in late, it's because I teach Japanese, not because I'm picking random languages out of, you know. They, so, you know, there, there's another set uh, that have to do with college majors and then stuff with adjectives, you know, things like, you know, pretty and handsome and long and, you know, this kind of stuff. So, so a lot of different things can happen via images. The issue that kids have in a lot of, in a lot of their spaces, educationally speaking, is that everything is a little too predictable for them. When we start to talk, they, they just kind of feel like they know what's coming and they move into this lower gear. But when we say something like, I'm gonna show you a picture, now they're curious because they don't know what's coming. And breaking predictability is, is one of the very best ways to get kids to stop and go, wait, what, what, what's happening? Now, let me, let me illustrate this this way. Let's say I'm teaching the word for bicycle, jitensha, right? So I can say, all right, nandeska, what is it, what is it? and see if the kid can come up with detention this. However, however, looking at this, this is a picture of a bicycle, yes? Sure, but you may have a kid in class who's really into BMX, and this is the first, the first moment in the entire year that that kid is connected to what's happening in school. It could be. So the images have the chance to connect kids in interesting ways. So more pictures of bicycles, here we go. Boop. There we go. That's an interesting picture of bicycles. Yes, maybe I'm only wanting a word, bicycle. But now I've got kids wondering, what? You mean there are people in the world who herd camels using bicycles? Now they're wondering about the larger world. What about this one? There are bicycle taxis down there, a little hard to see given, given the projector, but still. What's amazing about this picture, or what's potentially amazing about this picture? You may have a kid in class whose first language is Spanish. And maybe that, that kid, in looking at this picture, says, hey, wait a minute. Those are words, those are words from where I'm from. What, wait. They're not used to having those connections in class. This is not hard. All I need to do is talk about bicycles. But suddenly, a moment of connection that may be quite important. There's something you don't see every day right there. How many of you got up this morning and before breakfast balanced a bicycle on your forehead? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Some of you are like, yes, but not before my coffee. Okay, fair. But this is, this is the kind of thing that makes kids stop and go, whoa. Because they're used to what happens in class. What we need is to break that predictability. History class, here we go, right here. How many of you, when I say the word Schwinn, you know exactly what I'm talking about? But, but, you know, that's a culturally specific term. And, and depending on your age, you might say, Schwinn, what? But those of us from a certain age, right, would, would know that Schwinn equals bicycle. That's interesting. Some of us say, some of us still say, why don't you Xerox that? I mean, you know, it, it comes from a particular point in our society, in our culture. That's interesting. Now, you can find tons. By the, remember, you're going to get these slides, so, so you'll have this, but you can write it down if you want. It's up to you. You can find tons of copyright-friendly images. Now, I'm trying to do a digital media session in 60 minutes. I do week-long workshops on digital media. 
how to integrate it into what you're doing, how to you know, get excited about these things, how to you know, help the kids better learn. I mean, just all kinds of things I do with digital media. 60 minutes, I'm moving fast, sorry about that. Nevertheless, this is a great point of departure for finding really good digital media. Now, I'll keep going. Know that you've got this coming up in terms of slides. Some of you like quick picture, all good, you know, that's fine. Additionally, there's stuff you can do. Once you have copyright friendly images, like all the bicycle ones I just showed you, and this one, what can you do with them? Well, one of the things that I think of in terms of easing students into digital media is creating these very simple assignments. So here is one of two slides where, where the idea is, okay, come up with a picture of some place in the world, anywhere you wish. It may be a place you're from, place you've been, place that you want to go. And your job is to cite the source. So we've got the name of the image, we've got the username of the person who uploaded it, and the site from which you got it, and I've even linked the name to the Flickr page. The second page would be a short written description, the second slide would be a short written description of why that particular place is important. So it's a, it's a little writing assignment, but it's also emphasizing what it means to properly cite your source. Now, citing sources is, is something that's very important to me, running a little digital video library, but, but as, I, as I talk more about that, I you know, think back to this. Okay, you can have this very simple little activity that helps them learn to do this. You can do something similar with vocabulary. You, can have the, you don't even have to do the work yourself. Show kids how to find a copyright-friendly image, give them each a piece of vocabulary that they're supposed to learn, and then the first slide would be the image in this case, photosynthesis. And the second slide would be why that image properly explains this term, photosynthesis, or whatever the term may be. Now, I've got, on, on both of these, by the way, boop, you see how I've got the citation practice template in the upper left there? And then, down here, template for vocabulary practice. You can get the Google slide presentation as, as a template from these slides and do the same thing yourself. You just go to file, make a copy, and cut loose. Share it with the kids, do all kinds of things. So there's lots of possibilities with this. Now, I, I have been peddling, uh, that sounds like I'm selling it. Um, I've, been, I've been sharing a two-page PDF for years about how to grab and cite a copyright-friendly image from Flickr using search.creativecommons.org. And just last week, I went to the site and it looked different. So I'm in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to recreate that. So stay in touch with me if, if, that's, if you're like, oh, I'd love to have something I could give my kids to show them how to do all this. I'm going to create it in the next couple of weeks. So just stay in touch with me, and, and you'll get it. It'll be on the resources page as well. All right. Now, so we talked about audio. We talked about images. I want to talk about simple videos, because not all videos are equal. There are all kinds of videos. There are videos that you take with a camera, you know, like video camera, and I do this, and people are like, eh, you know, that kind of stuff. Fair enough. All good. That's footage, video camera. There are also videos where the images are what you see on the screen, screencast videos, yeah, Khan Academy stuff, things like that. Then there are videos that are created from pictures. Now you can create really good images, images, really good videos from images. And if you can download stuff from the internet, you wouldn't even need a camera to make a video. That's interesting. So let's take a look at how you can do this. I'm going to demonstrate this with another kind of old school piece of technology, but it applies to all, you know, kind of anything similar. So if you've got a bunch of old PCs, you might say, hey, you know, that kind of looks a little familiar. I think we've got that on our machines. Photo Story 3. It's a free program from Microsoft. Let me say that again. It's a free program from Microsoft. I know that sounded strange. Now, it's been around for years, and, and they don't tend to, like, do a big job of explaining that it's out there, but teachers love this program. They love it. Now, if you're saying, oh, well, we've got a bunch of Macs. You've got iMovie. iMovie's great for this. Can you do this with Windows Movie Maker? Yes. Can you do it online using a Chromebook? Absolutely. There are, there are sites like WeVideo and Narrable. Uh, you know, I mean, sites like that where you can do all of this stuff online as well. Are there apps for doing this stuff? Yes. So, so all, all of the different kind of platforms you might be using, there's something that will allow you to do this. And if you have trouble finding it, email me and I'll, and I'll get you the name of something that will. But I'm going to show you how to use Photo Story real quick because I want you to see how easy it is. How many of you have made a video before? Okay, lots of hands. How many of you whose hands are up? Go ahead and keep them up for a minute. Keep your hands up if you have made lots of videos. 
Okay, we lost about half of you, or, or, or more at that point, or hands down. So, so natural enough, but for a lot of people, there's this sense of, oh, that's got to be hard. So, here we go. So watch. So here I, I started Photo Story 3. It says, begin a new story. Cool. Go next. What, what should I do? It says, import and range your pictures. There's a button that says, import pictures. Should I press that? I think so. So we click that. And we get these pictures. And here, here are like the standard pictures that come with Windows 7, right? And so I'll, I'll get the koala and the jellyfish and the penguins. Okay. So now we've got jellyfish, koala, penguins. Oh, but I want the koala at front. Okay, fine. So I click on the koala. I drag koala to the left. Now koala starts us off. Great. So let's go next. What can you do next? You can add a title, but the titles suck. Sorry, there's that verb again. Moving on. So here we go. So and then we come to this. This screen, magic. Magic happens here. So there are two things that are wildly cool. One is the customized motion. It's kind of, kind of inconspicuous down there, but this, this part is great. So what you do is you click on customized motion and you tell it, okay, how do I, where do I want it to go? So you have to tell it again that you were serious the first time you click. That's a little strange, but still. So, so I got this and I want it to zero in on his face, but not like show like uh, the, the endless forehead that he's got going there. So I'm gonna like just drag down so it's kind of more about his face there. Save, go to the next one. Now we're, now we're doing motion, right? And motion shouldn't be random, it should emphasize something. In this case, it's going to emphasize length because that's kind of the natural thing that you think of with jellyfish. So we're gonna start over here on the left, we're gonna to go to the right. Save, next. Now we got penguins. Okay, I was serious. Here we go, I'm gonna start with their faces and we'll, we'll zoom out, totally fine, save. Now I'm gonna go back to the beginning and I'm gonna preview this so that you can see what I accomplished in 30 seconds, even with the added burden of explaining it as I went. Here we go, so preview. And it thinks about it, and you get this. Here's, here's our koala, kind of zeroing in on the face. And then it transitions to our, our jellyfish. Jellyfish, turns out, are quite long. Wow, that's really interesting. It has to do with, you know, the way they gather food. Oh, wow, now we've got penguins. And they're kind of hanging out and talking to each other about what might be cool because of penguins. That was easy. How many of you are like, I like that? Lots of teachers like that. A lot of elementary teachers, the first week of school, they'll take pictures of every kid in class, when they're smiling. And then in the second week at back to school night, they'll have a, like a, a quick video that they made in all of 10 minutes, playing as the kids walk in, uh, as their parents, whew, as their parents walk into the classroom. And of course, every parent's like, when will I see my kid? Oh, look, there's my kid smiling. Good packaging, good PR going, going on with this. This is simple. So you might say, well, that's pretty cool, but I, I'll bet you could do some really good uh, academic stuff with that. But of course. So the other piece of magic on this one is right here. It's the narration. So check this out. Hello, I'm a koala, and I'm going to introduce you to several of my friends. A jellyfish, which is quite long, and three penguins that are meeting together to talk about how cool Visti is going to be. Now I'm going to preview this, but I've got people in the audience right now, right now, who are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. Energetic California got up way too early this morning, all right? When you showed this a minute ago, each of those pictures was about five seconds. And you just recorded your voice, and I think you spent about 10 seconds recording your voice. It's gonna spill over into the, uh, uh, the jellyfish, isn't it? Well, let's see. This program may be old, but it does something that you almost never see, which is it takes your narration and extends the length of time the visual is in the, the piece of media to accommodate the larger narration. That's cool! Oh my goodness, that's cool. What do you mean that's cool? Think of it this way. Let's say you've got kids who have, who have done artwork and you've scanned in the artwork and so the, the, the images in Photo Story are the kid's artwork, and the kid is telling the story. And one image may take the kid 30 seconds to explain, the next one may take four seconds to explain. Program's handled it for you. You may be a high school science teacher, and, and the kids are, are doing work with, with some kind of lab experiment, and they're explaining what they did along the way. So this is what we saw. The, you know, these were our observations. This was our hypothesis. This is how we decided to go about getting the data. Easy program for doing it. Now, now, I love Photo Story, but I love anything that kind of does 
an easy job of helping you quickly create a digital story. Because we need these stories to explain the cool stuff that's happening at our schools. Because we just don't do that kind of thing enough. Now, there's a little more to this, right? So you go next and you can select music, create music. Create music, that's an interesting button to have in any program, by the way, create music. All right? And then you go next and you say, okay, well, I want to do this, this, and the next, and it makes the video. And it just, boom, it just makes it. It's very, very fast, which is nice because we want stuff that's easy. Let me explain something about software for a minute. If you're working with a tool, a resource, an application, a piece of software, and it's hard to learn, that's not your fault. That's the fault of the people who made it. It's their job to come up with something that we can learn quickly. I don't, I don't want to be told this is a fantastic tool that's going to take me 10 weeks to learn it. I, no, I'm busy. But if I sit down to it and it's kind of intuitive to learn it quickly, that's good programming. That's good design. If you've ever had trouble learning something, you're like, oh, I'm just no good at this. No, they did a lousy job of creating the program. It should be something that you can learn quickly. How many of you agree with me on that? Raise your hand. All right. Excellent. So we're also avoiding something else. When we have something like a video made from images, there are certain issues with footage that we can not have to worry about. Because when you're doing footage, what kinds of problems do you run into? Ambient noise, for example. You know, I couldn't hear what the guy was saying because of the cars in the street. Yeah, that's a problem. All right? It was kind of hard to see things because it was too dark. Yep, yeah, that's an issue. So th there's all kinds of things that, that, that people do. Well, actually, it was a perfect recording, except I, I, start, I started the button just too late, and we missed the first two words. No! Oh, you know, this kind of moment. So there's lots that you can avoid by getting used to creating media in a setting like Photo Story 3, where, where it kind of helps you figure those things out. Ease into the media. You with me? Okay. I see you have a cat on the screen. Yes. Uh, this is, this is Gordita. Uh, my wife and I, uh, up until a few years ago, had three cats, and then we had two. And Gordita passed away earlier this year at the age of 21. We loved that cat into a seriously long existence. Some of you are like, the cat's name was Gordita? Yes. This was a circumferentially challenged cat. <laughs> We're talking great girth. Nevertheless, the reason I have the picture on the screen is I want to take you back to that junior high class that I taught the middle school class, where all my stories seem to come from, because boy, did they teach me how to become a better teacher. Now, early in the year, I was showing them how to do photo story. And in order to show photo story, you have to have some pictures. For you guys, I had a koala, jellyfish, and some penguins. When I showed the kids, I used pictures of my cats. Now, let me, let me step aside for a minute and explain the setting. So there was this one kid in the class, Christina, who had this remarkably consistent way of showing up to class each day. This is Christina coming into the classroom each morning. You know, I mean, she's just snarling, right? It turns out they have rather amazing shifts in moods in, at, at that age. Anyway, so. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say, Christina, hey, how are you doing? Durr. I hope your day gets better. Right? And we, we get about six weeks into it. I'm showing them how to do photo story. And I, and I you know, say, okay, this is how you do photo story. Let me show you. So here's some pictures of my cats. This is Flaca, Gordita, and Chiquita. Right? And, and this is how you put these up, and you do this and this and this, and this is how you make it happen. Give it a shot. Go. And they start working on it. I'm being attacked. That's all good. Now, so I set them to work on using photo story. And up stands one student and starts walking over to me. It's Christina. And she's walking my way and she's looking like this. Here she is walking towards me. And I'm thinking, whoa, what happened? What happened to the face, right? Mr. Hurley. Yeah, Christina, what you got? We have cats too. Wow. I, they're great, aren't they? Yeah. Do you think you could take some pictures of your cats, maybe make a video using this program? Yeah. Why don't, why don't you give it a shot? Okay. I'm thinking, what just happened? And she walks into class the next day. This, this is how she did it. Hey, Mr. Hurley. <laughs> so, 
suddenly I was her favorite teacher. I'm a good and decent human being. It's clear why I have cats. <laughs> the thing is, that, and the lesson, and, and perhaps the entire session comes down to this. You never know what will connect you to a kid. You never know. You never know what that piece of who you are is that'll make a kid go, I like that one. You never know. And if you do things the same way all the time, you are limiting your chances of, of sharing whatever that piece of you is, nothing creepy, of course, but I mean, just that, that would allow the kids to go, I like this one, I like this one. It's a heck of an opportunity. Digital media, in that we are forced to tell stories, means that we start paying attention to these larger aspects of who we are. That's something special. Now, having shown you like all of these different things about how to get there, I am now actually going to explain, believe it or not, I'm going to explain how to implement a video project even if you don't know anything about video. <laughs> Some of you just looked up like, you gotta be kidding. No. No, no, no. So, guys, you are my class. Wave at me, class. Yay. All right, those of you who are paying attention, awesome job. Good job. All right, now, everybody else, you're still good people. It's all good. Now, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to explain to you about the video project we're going to do. Guys, we're going to do a video project. There's enthusiasm. That'd be great. <laughs> a couple of you are like, all right, no, all good, all good. Now, one thing I want you to do is make sure to test any software or apps or whatever it is you're going to use, you know, like in the coming week, because I really don't know how to do any of this stuff, so I can't help you. Good luck. <laughs> Some of you are thinking, you've got to be kidding. You can't say that to kids. I can. I don't tell them how to use a pencil. But, but those are different. Wait. Let's get into it. All right, so we're going to do a video project. First thing you need to know about your video project is this. It's due in six weeks. Give them loads of time. Loads of time. Do not assign a video project for, say, Monday. Give them loads of time. So the first thing you need is plenty of time. Here we go. Six weeks! I, it could be four, I don't know. It's just not like three days. The next thing you need to know is this. Okay, guys, so it's due in six weeks. However, your script is due in two weeks. This is what gets the grade. Some of you are like, I can't do a video project. How would I grade it? Don't. What? You're the, what? Grade the script. They come up with a script for their video, and that shows you whether they're using the stuff that you teach or not, and whether they know properly how to deal with the concepts that you're, you're putting in front of them. It's just kind of, have them give you a script. Don't start filming until I've approved your script. Now. You might say, wait, wait a minute. If the grade's in the script, what's motivating them to make a video? Well, here's, here's two functions of it. Okay, one, you're gonna get a grade with the script. However, you don't get to keep the grade unless you show up with a video. Some of you are thinking, okay, I see that. However, what would make it good? Here's the other thing right here. Everyone will see the videos you make. I just changed the dynamic of this thing in a big, whopping way. This is something I say a lot, and I'm going to say it again. When kids are making something that other kids will see, they want it to be good. When they're making something that only I, the teacher, will see, they want it to be good enough. You with me? So we want them to make something good. Let them know that the other kids are going to see it. Assuming it's not something that would say, get you fired. All good. What's up with the posters? Some of you might be thinking, okay, wait, wait. That's, that's, a, that's a nice set of thoughts, but I've got, I got kids who, you know, they may not have access to this stuff, or you know, they may not, you know, how, how are you gonna deal with that? For the video project, you don't have to do a video if you don't want. What? Instead, you may make a poster and present it to the class. Now. In 10 years of doing video projects with kids, how many posters did I have turned in? Zero. Why? Let me, let me explain this. Everybody look my way. De-screen for a minute and look my way. Here we go. I'm going to explain why. Videos are cool. Posters are not. End of story. That's it. 
Can you, can you imagine like the kid in front, you know, before you has like this really cool video and they show the video and the kids are like, oh, that's great, that's great. And you're the next kid? Here's my poster. <laughs> You'll do anything to avoid being that kid, anything. You'll learn to make a video. Like, you can't do that. They, they may not know. Here. For your video project, you may work alone or with one or two other students if those students are willing to work with you. Now that's big. That's big because between these two last things here, posters and partners, you just inoculated yourself from the helicopter parent virus. <laughs> the parent who walks in, I can't believe that you assigned a video project to my child. He doesn't know that. And you're like, Duh. I just need to take a shower. <laughs> it's okay. Your child can make a poster if he wishes. He doesn't know how to make a video. He can work with a kid who knows how. That's totally fine. Well, then, I'll just go away. Thank you. So, <laughs> it's okay to work with a partner. It's not going to be so big a percentage of your grade that it matters. That's fine. Now, <laughs> save yourselves. What do you mean? Guys, for your projects, 45 seconds or less. Your video must be 45 seconds or less. And now you got people who are like, oh, there's not enough time. It's not really long, man. Teens whine. It's their job. I'd worry about them if they didn't. But if it's a short video, then they'll get to the point. And they'll use that time as best they can. Short's good. No time limit? You tell a bunch of middle, middle school kids they need to make a video about photosynthesis, you're going to have a couple, a couple of boys, it's mathematically likely to be boys, are going to come in with a video that's 20 minutes long. And you get about 20 seconds into it, and you notice that there's a lot of kung fu going on. <laughs> you're like, this video is about photosynthesis. You, you've got kung fu. Yeah, yeah, we thought we'd include some action scenes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how long is it? You're honor-bound to watch the thing because you assigned it. Consequently, save yourselves. Time limits. There may be other rules. I, I, used, to, I used to have this rule. I, I still would were I in the classroom. No death or kicking a man when he's down. Oh, just back there. And then they go off and make good videos, right? But, but I, just, I didn't want to see any violence. I just... Kids, you know, like beating up on other kids. Oh, that's funny. It's not funny. You guys are lame. You'll grow out of it, but you're lame. Sorry, you're, you're lame, right? Oh, Mr. Hurley, you don't understand. I was your age one day, and I was lame, but I grew out of it. I like to think. You know, that kind of thing. So anyway, finally, there's some teachers who are like, no, I can't do this because they bring in those files, and it doesn't work on my machine, and blah, 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 blah. Now, that makes a lot of sense to me, but still do the project. Why? Because you can have them turn in a link. They give you a link, and if you go to the link and the video plays, then they turn in the video. If you go to the link and it doesn't play, they didn't turn in the video. End of story. But how would they check to know if, well, they could get it to you ahead of time, they could actually send it to a friend, hey, can you, can you see this, like, will it play? When you... They can upload it to YouTube, no, no, the privacy. Look, when you upload to YouTube, you can choose that it's public, that's the default, or, you can choose, not private, actually, that would mean you can't watch it either, but unlisted. People can't find it. So you haven't, haven't used that. YouTube's blocked at our school. That's lame, but, but there are other tools out there. So, so there, are a lot of ways, there are a lot of ways to do this. Now, let's keep going. I've shown you like all of this implementation stuff. Let me kind of cover some more ground, because in 11 minutes, I think I can do it. Let's get some quality out of these kids. Let's get them to give us some good stuff. Some of you are like, amen, that'd be all right. Here we go, check this out. Get kids to watch other kids work. Not the other kids in the room. That actually is not productive in terms of getting the kids to properly critique what's there. But if it's work by other kids that they don't know, man, these kids can now critique. And you'll, you'll get all kinds of critique. And they'll say things like, oh man, that video was, you know, was kind of lame. You couldn't understand what they were saying because it was standing next to a road and like cars were going by. Right. When you make your video, don't do that. 
Okay, so that video was like really boring. I mean, like they were interviewing this guy and he was standing in front of the wall and that was the only thing the entire video. That was boring. Right. Don't do that. So like, you know, they were, they were talking to this guy, but like he was standing in front of a window and there was all this light coming in front of that. You couldn't even see him. Right. Don't do that. So you can give them a list of things like not to do. They're going to ignore the list. It's just kind of the way they're wired. But if they'll watch some videos created by them, and these are all videos about different careers that kids made. They're kind of cool. Here's a, here's a set of videos about, that are finalists from our, uh, our contests. So those videos can, can be tons of fun right there. And get the kids to like, see what they see and to critique them. And they ask questions. What was strong? What was weak? What would you have done differently? That one was big. It was big. It was big. When you ask kids, how would you have approached that differently? Now they're being creative. Well, you could have done it this way. Well, we could have included this. Or you, you could have made it like... You know, so they've got ideas. Get them to answer that question as they look at other kids' work. How would you have done it differently? And, depending on the subject matter, you might also ask them to say, how would you validate the information that's presented to you? Common core. There we go. All, right, all kinds of good stuff going on there. So, have kids watch them individually. You say, okay, go home. Your, your homework is to watch three videos from this page about careers of these finalists or something like that. We have to watch videos for homework? Yes. Greatest homework ever. Okay, so enjoy. And then when they come back the next day, they discuss it in groups. What did you see? What was good? And then you talk about it. You look at a few together. I mean, you, you can get them well on their way to making good stuff by having them experience that critique. Okay, so there, there, there are your kind of different pieces of that. All right. Now, Here's the problem. This is often their question. We give them an assignment. This is their question. I'd like you to write a one-page paper on Lincoln. They get about two-thirds of the way through the page. What are they trying to do? Fill up lines. Their goal is not to show with added space what they've learned about Lincoln. Their job is to fill up lines. So they get to the thing and they hand it to the here. Am I done yet? And you're like, oh, I hate that question. Right? Young man, you can do better than this. Oh, I just want it off my plate. I don't want it to oppress me ever again. Okay, dude. All right, so th this, this is a lame question, but it's in their heads. What we need is this question. This is the question that if they're asking, I'm not worried about that kid's future. This is it. Here's my piece of writing. Here's my PowerPoint. Here's my video. Here's my 3D hologram. Whatever it may be. How can I make it better? Here's what I've done. How can I make it better? Is that worked into your assignments where the kids turn to each other and say, here's what I did, how can I make it better? And people give them advice, other students, other adults, whatever. And their job is to say thank you very much. And if they don't like the advice, then they just ignore it. But there may be some good advice in there that really helps them come up with something better and they know it. Because so often what we're doing is we're praising kids for doing things like breathing. Wow, you're doing a fine job breathing. Oh, I'm, I'm talented. All right, great. Now what we need is for them to do something that's really interesting because when they get praised for that, they know that they put work into it. And at that point, they're growing. Praise works when they know they had to work to get there. So, we do these contests. The rules, 90 seconds or less, properly explain something that one might encounter in, in school. You can only use copyright-friendly media from specific sites. You must cite your sources. There are release forms on our site. You'll need to use those or those that you may already have at your school. We have deadlines, of course, and strands. We have a teacher strand, a student strand, and a collaboration strand. Collaboration? That's when the teachers and the students work together to design or edit the video. As you look in our finalists, you, you'll kind of get a feel for it. But I, I hope you'll take kind of an interest in this. We have these kind of cool prizes. We have, you know, we have gift cards. We have certificates. And, of course, international glory. It's great. And just... Right now, okay, this, this is my site, nextvista.org. Next Vista for Learning, online library of videos by and for teachers and students everywhere. Thank you very much. Now, these videos are fun and interesting and cool, and it's screened content. So it's, it's, you can't just give us anything. Here's my video about why the Earth is really flat. It's all a NASA plot. Dude, all right? So we don't, we don't take that video. But we get a lot of videos where kids give us something, and we say, you know, this is good, but, but it needs to be better. Can you, can you make this change? Can you add a credit for the music and then resubmit it? We give kids feedback on the videos they give us. So that's actually a, a thing that teachers like most about our contests. And for the current contest, 
which does end very soon, actually a week from Friday. The winners get Sony Xperia S Android tablets. Those came out as $500 tablets. Those probably get them now for, say, $499, but nevertheless. Cool prizes is a part of this. So we love, you know, seeing kids, you know, kind of get into it. Oh, I'm going to make a video this weekend. It's going to be great. So examples. Do I have time for some examples? I hope I have some time. What have I got coming up? I do. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one video. This video is called The Author's Purpose. See what you think. Like that video, like that was so fun. That's an example of, of a collaboration video where, where the kids and the teacher worked together to kind of get the piece, the piece in front of you. So when you think about these and any digital media, I want you to know this. You can learn any tool you want for free whenever you wish. Some of you are like, oh, you just caught my attention. Where do you go? YouTube. You go to YouTube and you put in the name of the tool and the magic word tutorial and you search. So here's a search on We Video Tutorial. Now, take a look. He's got some videos there. How do you choose which one? Big helpful here. You look at how long they are. Start with a short one. Because if the short one's helpful, good. And then you can click on the maker of that video and see other videos that maybe she or he made. Here's another thing to look for right here. How many views it's had. A video that's had 6,000 views may be more useful than a video that's had 15. And when it was done as well. So if a video was put up two years ago about something like the online video tool, editor tool, we video, two years ago is a long time. That may be too long in terms of it being up to date with the stuff that you want. So, if you have questions, feel free to come on up and talk to me, but here's how to stay in touch with me. And here are the slides right here. All of the slides I just showed you, tinyurl.com slash rh Vista media. You can email me here. This is my Twitter handle. All right, uh, the videos are at nextvista.org. I was a little late to Instagram, so I'm at Russian was taken. Right? And then the resources are nextvista.org slash resources, and there's the newsletter. I hope you'll sign up for the newsletter. Uh, feel free to go there right now, and it'll only take you a few seconds. In the newsletter each month, I put out uh, new videos that we've added to our site, stuff that I've run across that I find inspiring in some way, and tons of free resources. That's, that's like one of the, the missions of my little charity, is to get stuff out there that can be useful to teachers without their having to say, pay for it. So with that, I want to thank you for coming to this session. I hope you'll be at the uh, closing gig today. I've got lots more to say about 
about cool opportunities with technology. And, uh, and then, you know, if you, if you can survive all the way through that, you can, you can be there for the drawings of swag. So with that, guys, have a great morning, and thank you for coming. Thank you.